Hello guys, let's talk about Dalton's law of partial pressures and mole fractions. So the total pressure exerted by a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the gases in the mixture. So if P sub T is the total pressure, then it equals to the sum of the partial pressures of each gas in the mixture. So P1, P2, and P3 are the partial pressures of the gases. And that is the pressure exerted by an individual gas in a mixture. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Let's say that I have a vessel here which contains two atmospheres of nitrogen gas. And then if I have the same vessel there, which contains three atmospheres of O2 gas, I can mix the two gases in one vessel, which is going to have the same volume as the previous two vessels. And if I do that, the total pressure will equal to the sum of the partial pressures. So two ATM plus 3 atm, which is going to give me a total of 5 atmospheres of pressure of the mixture of N2 plus O2 gas. I hope this makes sense. Obviously, if we are talking about pressures, we need to talk about the ideal gas equation, right? So that is PV equals nRT, which I can rearrange to solve for pressure, which equals nRT over V. Now, if I take the partial pressure of one of the components, let's say the partial pressure of N2 gas, and I'm going to designate it with P1, and divide it by the total pressure, I can substitute that for the ideal gas equation. So that equals to N1, which is the number of moles of nitrogen gas, let's say in this case, multiplied by R times T divided by V, the volume. And this will be divided by N2. T, which is the total moles of all the gases. Well, if we are talking about the N2 plus O2 mixture, that is going to be the moles of the nitrogen and the oxygen gas multiplied by R times T divided by V. Now, because we are at a constant temperature and a constant volume, we can actually cross those out and R is a constant on both sides. So we can rewrite this as N1 divided by NT, right? And the moles of one component in a mixture divided by the total number of moles is actually going to give you the mole fraction of that component. So this is the mole fraction of component one. Now, don't mix it up. This is actually not a letter X. This is the Greek letter chi, okay? We can rearrange this equation we look at chi1, p1, and pt in order to calculate the partial pressure of any of the components. So if I have component 1, its partial pressure equals to the mole fraction of that component multiplied by the total pressure. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Let's do some practice problems. A chamber contains argon, neon, and nitrogen gas. The total pressure in the vessel is 7.8 atmospheres. The partial pressures of nitrogen and argon are 3.2 and 1.8 atm respectively. The partial pressure of neon in the chamber is blank atm. Okay, so we know that the total pressure equals to the partial pressure in this case of argon plus the partial pressure of neon and plus the partial pressure of N2 gas. We are given the partial pressure of nitrogen and argon gases, which is 3.2 and 1.8 atmospheres, and we have to solve for the partial pressure of neon gas. So I can simply rearrange this equation and the partial pressure of neon gas equals to the total pressure minus the partial pressure of argon gas plus the partial pressure of nitrogen gas. So if we substitute the number 7.8 atm minus 3.2 atm plus 1.8 atm. And if you do this calculation, you are going to get 2.8 atms as the partial pressure 
of neon gas. Now, what is the mole fraction of neon in this case? Well, we know that the partial pressure of neon equals to the total pressure multiplied by the mole fraction of neon. We can just rearrange this equation to solve for the mole fraction of neon, which is going to equal to the partial pressure of neon divided by the total pressure. So if I substitute the numbers, 7.8 atm divided by 2.8 atm, what is the unit of the mole fraction? Well, the ATMs will cancel out. Actually, the mole fraction is unitless. So if you do this calculation, you are going to get 0 0.36 as the mole fraction of neon in this case. I hope this makes sense. See you in the next video.